I'm artist Jenny Floribita and welcome back to my channel and today I'd like to focus on painting leaves. Let's paint some giant bird of paradise leaves and we're going to use ones from a yard. These are these are the giant bird of paradise leaves and you can see they're just they're big and they're beautiful and they're lush and they've got like lots of nice uh, sienna colors. It's more than just a green leaf. I'd like to show you how to mix some of the greens and some of the shade colors and and I've got a painting that's already halfway finished so let's let's get to it. For this painting I mostly used flat brushes and I'm going to show you more in depth about the colors in a minute but the flat brushes really work nicely for the leaves. In the leaves, you're going to notice in my photograph that sections of the Giant Bird of Paradise leaf have a little bit of a gray-blue tint, but for the sake of making a watercolor exciting, we're going to add a few more colors and we're just going to make it really expressive. And these are the colors that I'm using. I like using this gray plate when I'm mixing colors for leaves. It just helps me keep my colors simplified. I'm not gonna use a big list of colors. I'm using some greens and some blues and some violets. And the Bird of Paradise leaves, they do have sienna colors, but for the demonstration that I'm doing today, we're just going to be painting a couple of the leaves from scratch and we're gonna be doing the underpainting. Here I'm mixing colors and you can see this is this is what this gold green looks like. It's really beautiful. It's a Daniel Smith color and a lot of times I'm mixing colors with other colors. So it's, I, I do a little bit of straight out of the tube and I'll, I'll use water to, to dilute the pigment down and that way I can get a, a wide range of colors and then I do a lot of mixing on my palette. Both of these strategies work really nice to create a lot of a wide variety of, of colors and we're going to use these colors in, in the underpainting there in those leaves. So those are the leaves on the left hand side that we're going to focus on. And this part of the painting is sped up about three times. So this process was done a lot slower. When I'm, when I'm doing an underpainting, I realize that I've only got so much time to really make that underpainting interesting. And for the sake of making it expressive, I wanna add different blues and greens and violets, but I need them to be in a very, very, very light range because we're going to layer on top of this. I'm using a lot of water just to to get to stretch a little bit more hue variety out of these pigments and I like using the flat brush for a subject like this flat brushes are great for leaves um, they're also great for architectural elements really I could have done this with a brown brush but but these days, this is this is the kind of brush that I'm using for this type of subject. And this part of painting for me, well, this entire painting session, it has a very meditative quality. I just love color, so I'm going to vary that color in the bottom part in the underpainting of this leaf and I feel like that gives my paintings life. It's going to give you a luminescence and I think that's really important. So here the paint isn't quite dry but you can see the variety of color that I'm getting and it's 
to me, this is exciting. This is interesting. This is this is how I s would start a watercolor like this, and you can get a very realistic look. You can be both expressive and realistic. And I'm always making sure I'm going to have some fresh, clean water when I'm doing a painting subject like this, especially if it's just kind of like cools and greens. I don't want a lot of reds in that water. For this section of the painting, feel free to speed this up, but I decided that for about three to four minutes, I'm going to paint in real time, just so you can see how, I, I don't want to say how slow, but how, what my actual thought process is in terms of using the paint in the water. And I think that there's value in that. And these are the birds of paradise in my yard. And I, sh I should say giant birds of paradise. They grow against our house. Here in Northern California, we can have some colder weather. So you wanna have giant birds of paradise against your house if, if you're gonna have any chance of freeze. So you can see at the, the, the edges, they can have a lot of browns and siennas. And in this, I see I see lavenders and purples. And in another lesson, I'll show how I would handle that wide variety of, of kind of warm burnt colors. You get that when the leaves are old, when they've been burnt by the sun. And I just made a note that if you stay until if you watch until the nine minute mark, you're gonna see this leaf section really transform. You could always speed through this part, this part of the process if you don't want to watch in real time. I am going to uh, speed it up for the next session, but I think that there is value to see how slowly or quickly an artist really is working when they're working on a larger painting. I just really love the different colors that that come into these giant leaves. I love that that messy section. I find beauty in both the sections of the leaves being dead and falling and new and lush. It's just, to me, it's all amazing. Now, so this is where the flat brush really, really shines. I think I, that if you're going to have a section where you want like a crisp edge, a flat brush here is going to be very helpful. And I've got in this section, I'm still working on the underpainting for these couple of leaves. So, so I'm, I'm, you're going to notice I'm going to have um, sections that are going to overlap. So I'm going to be careful to leave, leave those sections white. And this was on a full sheet of paper. I believe the, the paper size is 22 by 28, but it could be 22 by 30. Now I've sped this section up. So this section here is, is going to move a lot quicker. And I'm painting it about two and a half times normal speed. When you've got so much green or perceived green, because these leaves aren't really green, just green like I said they, they are when you look at them they're lavenders and they're the lightest hues of cobalt blues mixed with soft violets there's just so much range you you're gonna get a more interesting product you're gonna get a more interesting painting if you continue to vary those colors so look at your subject and if you're working from a photograph I, I work from a lot of photographs because my paintings tend to be large but do whatever you can do to interpret that leaf, interpret that subject to make that more interesting than it would normally be. And that is the difference between copying a painting and making it art. 
My mom made a comment to me the other day and she was talking about her youth being being a musician um, and learning to paint and draw when she was younger and she chose music. She didn't choose to become a painter, but she had mentioned to me how she could um, really copy a painting and make it look just like a Walter T. Foster painting or whatever book she was working out of. And I said to her, but that doesn't actually really truly make it art. And it took me a long time to understand that because of course, when you're younger, if you've, if you've been doing art your whole life, you're gonna go through various phases of what you think art, art is. And I think once you start really interpreting subjects, if you're working from photos, now you're really making art more artistic. You're making the piece more your own. So this is a, another layer that I'm adding into the dry sections of leaves. And again, I am going to take my flat brush, and I could have done this with, with a round brush that has a tip, and I'm going to vary the edges. I don't want the edges to be all one width. I want to try and capture the way that leaf is moving in the wind. I want to try and capture the gesture of that leaf, and you're going to do that by both varying the colors and the hues. And so I'm going to do exactly what I did to do the underpainting. I'm going to grab different colors from the palette continuously. And this is where the gray, the gray of that plate really helps me out. If I were just using my regular palette, I would be relying on the just the mix of chaotic colors. And that works fine for me too, but I thought for for this for this session here, it would nice be nice just to see the focus colors. But you can see how I'm I'm creating the the shape of the leaf. I'm trying to get that papery feeling, and I'm really trying to just just bring that leaf to life on this flat piece of paper. A lot of painting is just simply illusion. this section here you know that that part that top part of the leaf that's that's torn away when it's windy I love that with um, banana plants and giant bird of paradise leaves and heliconia flowers I love that but you've got to learn to create how you've got to learn to create that um, feeling of separation and the way that it's done is by accurately drawing the shape and the shape might not actually be what you think it is in your brain. You just have to train your eye and train your hand to get those gestures so that those shapes pop off. They'll pop off the paper and then you have to look at how it's shaded and that's the underpainting and it's also the lines because in this, in Giant Bird of Paradise leaves, they've got these wonderful ridges and lines and and anyway, that's, that's just part of telling the story of the leaf. Every leaf has a story. So I, I made a note here because at this po point in the painting, I was, you know, I had my music and I'm editing it, editing the video and I'm, I'm adding some, you know, I'm just, I'm just re-listening to it and all of a sudden, you know, and this is a jazz tune, all of a sudden I hear whistling to the tune, to the tune of the song, and there's nobody home with me, and there's nobody in the room, and it was just, um, just kind of a chilling experience, and it happened one more time that night when the music stopped, I heard the whistling again, all my windows were closed because I was trying to keep the, ho the house real cool for my husband because we were kind of in a heat wave, and anyway, I just, you know, just thought I would uh, mention that. It's not too long when you consider, you know, a big painting might have a couple days of solid work into it. But 
when you're doing something like this, the idea is to constantly challenge yourself to keep it fresh. Keep those colors varying because you don't want the leaves to look kind of blah. But anyway, so we're kind of up towards the end of this. What I, what I did next um, that I didn't get a chance to show you is I, I did a live presentation in an art show that I did on my private Facebook art group and I showed how I would take these leaves and then paint layers of shadows on them. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed my, my art, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification. If you leave me a comment, it tells the, the algorithm on YouTube that this was you know, a great video to watch. And if you did watch this far and if you would love to be on my art newsletter list, there's a link below and I'd love to see you there and keep in contact. Thank you so much and have a, have a fabulous afternoon.